Hey there, my name is Morty Golding. If you don't know me, uh, you can find me on Twitter at just Morty. Uh, I used to be the product manager for Illustrator over at Adobe. Now I work at lynda.com and I've spent many years teaching people how to use Illustrator. So I thought it'd be really cool to share my process and how I created uh, the drop cap for this class, for Jessica, Jessica Hitch's class on creating a drop cap. So I'm gonna switch over to Illustrator. I'm using Illustrator CC, but really, just about all the techniques that I'm gonna be showing you really can be used in almost any modern version of Illustrator. So back to CS4, or even CS3 for that matter. Uh, otherwise, I can point out to you things that might be different. So I'm gonna start by creating a new document here. Command N, I'm on a Mac, by the way, so uh, keyboard shortcuts would always be Control instead of Command or Option would be Alt, same thing. Um, the size that Jessica has us using is five and a half by seven and three quarters tall. I have my document set to inches. Uh, I'm currently using the print profile, so everything's gonna be in CMYK. And I'm gonna click OK, so we have this artboard here. I'm gonna start by bringing in uh, the sketch that I was working with. So I'm gonna choose File, Place. And let's go here to my Sketches folder, my Refine Sketches folder. And I'm gonna use this one here, which is the A with the planet and the little spaceship that flies around to it. I'm gonna uncheck Link, because I just wanna embed this image inside of my file. I'm just gonna choose to place it here. It's pretty big. Tap the S key on my keyboard for the scale tool. I'm just gonna hold down the shift key so I can scale this down in proportion. Click and drag towards the center. Make it nice and small. Let's reposition it over here. It can be a little bit smaller here. I'll go ahead and just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. The exact size doesn't make that much of a difference. I have smart guides turned on, so as I position this, it's gonna snap automatically to the center of my screen. But I'm gonna press Command R uh, to go ahead and bring up my rulers. And because this is five and a half uh, inches wide, so two and three quarters would be the center. So I really wanna have a guide down the middle of this, and it's gonna help me to draw with just about anything else inside of Illustrator, especially for this document. So I'm just gonna click and drag out here. Instead of trying to zoom in or make sure it snaps to the right place exactly, I can just hold down the shift key. When you hold down the shift key, your ruler snaps to all the little tick marks that appear inside the ruler. So I can just go over here, let go of the mouse very quickly. I know that's exactly uh, two and three quarter inches. Keep in mind that rules inside of Illustrator are also just regular objects. It's just as if I have just drawn a line. So right now, if I right click on the screen here, you can see that my guides are not locked. There's no check mark here. So I can actually select the guide itself. And if I go to my transform panel, I can see the actual coordinates, the X coordinate for that guide. So if for some reason I was off by a little bit and I wanted to really align this up to a specific area, like 2.5, for example, I can position guides that way. So I want this to be 2.75. So let's just go ahead and do that. I actually don't want to mess with the guides anymore, so I'm just going to right-click and choose to lock my guides, and that way they won't get in the way. Now I'm going to go over here to the Layers panel here. I'm going to create a new layer. Now I want this to kind of act as my uh, sketch background, and I don't want it to get in the way. I have not gone into Photoshop to fix this up. This image was taken directly off of the phone, so I haven't tried to adjust it. I don't feel that I need to because I'm just going to drop the opacity back enough where the color does not get in the way as I'm working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer here, layer two, and that's where I'm gonna place my artwork. So I just create an artwork layer. And then layer one, I'm just gonna double click and call that my sketch layer. And rather than worry about trying to lock anything else, there's a feature built into Illustrator called a template layer. And if I double click on the sketch layer here, not on the name, because that will let me edit the name, but just to the right of it, I can check this box here called template. And notice that this is gonna automatically lock uh, set the preview to be different. I'm going to dim the, any images on that layer to a specific amount. 50, which is a default setting, is way too high. So I'm going to set that down to like 25% and click OK. So now I have what I need. If I click on the artwork layer, because now I'm going to draw on the artwork layer, you can notice that I don't accidentally select either the guide or the artwork layer. It's just there for me to be able to work with. So let's get started drawing this piece of artwork. There are many ways to draw artwork inside of Illustrator. My approach always is, is to look at the artwork itself and to try to identify where are the main shapes? What can I use you know, to create perfect shapes? Yeah, I can use the pen tool, and I've used the pen tool for many years, and I feel like I know how to use the pen tool very well, but I don't rely on the pen tool. I don't, it's not the first tool that I pick up to use, it's the last one that I choose to use, only when I can't achieve my artwork in some other form. So for example, just this outside part of the moon here is pretty much a perfect circle. And I could attempt to draw that with the pen tool, but this, the uh, ellipse tool is gonna be a much better uh, tool to, to be able to do that. So I'm just gonna click on the ellipse tool here. I'm gonna hold down my option key, uh, which is going to allow me to draw a circle out from the center. So I'm not really worried about exact positioning here. I just wanna create a circle, which is gonna be my overall shape 
for the moon itself. So I'm gonna hold down the Option key and the Shift key. The Shift key will constrain the shape so it's a perfect circle, not an oval. I'm gonna click and drag outwards here. And this is again one of the reasons why I like to draw the guide when I first start because it's going to be a center point of my artwork. I'm always gonna be drawing things out and I wanna align them out from the center that way. So that's pretty much the shape that I want. I'm gonna press D for default and that's going to set my shape to have this black stroke and a white fill and a keyboard shortcut to get rid of the fill here. You'll notice that in Illustrator, I can either have my fill color in focus or my stroke color in focus. I'm gonna hit the forward slash key on my keyboard and that's going to set whatever is currently in focus to be set to none. So right now my fill is in focus. If you wanna switch focus between your uh, fill and stroke, the X key on your keyboard lets you toggle the focus between them. But since my focus before was on fill, hitting the slash key sets it to none. So now I can kind of see that shape. So I wanna create this nice little sliver here of the moon basically. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit closer. And I'm simply gonna go ahead now and option shift drag to the left a little bit. And that's going to create a copy of this. Now initially in my sketch, I had made a pretty nice sized uh, moon here. But as I was working with this, I realized that I really wanted to have it just be a tiny sliver of the moon itself. So I'm just gonna use the uh, keyboard to you know, tap the arrow key a few times to kind of position this. I also don't want it to be perfect. Let me zoom out just a second here. You can see that because I've just moved it over just to the left, so the top and the bottom are gonna be uh, perfectly aligned. Uh, and I really wanna kind of have it have uh, a point where it kind of starts a little bit over here on this left side of the, uh, of the A, but I want it to kind of end over here. I want to almost kind of have it be on some kind of an angle, get some more interest to it. So I'm just going to go ahead now and tap this and bring it down just to drop, which is going to give me that nice little shift. Now, a lot of people use the Pathfinder command. I don't like to use Pathfinder anymore. There's a new tool inside of Illustrator that is far more powerful, which is called the Shape Builder tool. And uh, it's basically a way for you to uh, visually apply Pathfinder. So I'm just going to select these two shapes right here. It's two regular plane circles. And I'm going to go to my um, tools panel over here and choose the Shape Builder tool. The keyboard shortcut is Shift-M for Morty. <laughs> I don't know. I just made that up and it sounds pretty good. But I always uh, have kind of gotten out to the point where I memorize that keyboard shortcut. I use it a lot in my drawing. So Shift-M. And again, the reason why I use the Shape Builder a lot is because I don't like to rely on the pen tool to do all the heavy lifting. I like to draw regular shapes, which are perfect and very easy to draw in position, and then use the Shape Builder tool to get other more complex shapes out of them. So you'll notice that by default, I have a little plus sign here. That means as I drag over objects, they're going to be combined or added or united together, uh, which is like Pathfinder Unite. But I actually want Pathfinder to subtract. I want to remove parts of this artwork. If I hold down my Option key, that changes the plus sign to a minus. And now if I click and drag, anything that I draw over gets uh, subtracted or it's like on a minus front kind of thing. And just with a simple click and drag, I've now removed the parts that I don't need. And now I have just this one part of the moon here itself. So that's the first part of the shape that I'm going to work with. Let's focus now on the actual letter A itself. Now I'm going to need the letter A to actually be in two parts because as, as you can see, I have this kind of little swoosh, right? The little kind of orbit path uh, where the spaceship is kind of coming behind from the dark side of the moon and then kind of going on the free return back home. So I want it to kind of have this 3D kind of look. So I want the actual kind of, you know, jet stream or whatever you want to call it kind of fall behind this part of the A, but then come in front of it towards the outer part of here as well. So in order for me to achieve that look, I'm going to need to basically split the A in half and send half of the A to the back, and this part of the A will be uh, in the front of that uh, little part here as well. So let's go ahead and first kind of create the basic parts of the A itself. And again, I may go ahead now and just draw the shapes, and then I can, once they're in vector form, it's very easy for me to make adjustments as I go later on. I'm going to start by using the line segment tool, very basic tool. Sure, I could use the pen tool, but again, the line segment tool is just easier for me to work with. And if I go ahead now and I just start clicking here and I drag down this way, um, I can position uh, the line for this part of the A. Now, I have smart guides turned on, and you can see now that little gray bar appears, that little gray box appears, and it lets me know what angle this line is currently at, and that's going to be important later on. I'm going to show you. So I actually want to have this drawn at a nice size, at a nice angle. In this case here, it's 290 degrees. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and position that over here. I don't care if it extends past the ends here uh, or not, because as I'm gonna share with you later, I use the Shape Builder tool to kind of adjust that for me. But I just wanna get the basic shapes lined out here. Again, I'll use the Line tool again to draw a shape, like let's say from the line here, center outwards. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take this shape over here, 
click and drag with the Option key and bring it down right here as well. So I'm just going to bring it, bring it just say right here. So I kind of have it. It's on the same angle. By option dragging it down this way, I am ensured that it's on that same angle of 290 degrees when I do this. Now, why did I care about the 290 degrees? Well, I want to create now a part here where the inside part of the A is kind of rounded, right? I'm actually nudge this over just to drop more this way. And I'm going to zoom into this part here. I want to have this kind of be a nice, perfect round curve. Now, how am I going to do that? I could use the pen tool to kind of adjust it or Again, Illustrator will give me an ellipse tool which draws perfect circles. So I'm going to start over here with the ellipse. I'm going to basically go to the center line here, Option, Shift again, drag outwards to create a circle. And again, I have the guides here. I can create something else, let's say about a quarter of an inch. Beautiful. I have that right there. And I want this line to connect exactly to this part of the curve to have a nice smooth curve to the top. But if you see here how the points are aligned over here, I don't have an easy way to do that. So because I was careful about what angle this line was actually drawn at, I can rotate the circle so that these points align to that. So what do I mean by that? So I'm going to double click on the uh, rotate tool. So I have here the rotate tool. I'm just going to double click on it. When you double click on the rotate tool, it allows you to make precise measurements. In this case here, I can rotate it specifically 290 degrees. And you might ask yourself, why would I ever want to rotate a circle? Because every time I rotate a circle, it's always going to look the same. Right? You can rotate it no matter how you want. It's always just a circle. But keep in mind that we have anchor points here. So what I'm basically doing is now is I'm rotating the circle to get the anchor points to align in the direction that I want it to be aligned to. So if I click OK now, you can see now that the angle of these anchor points is exactly perpendicular to the line that I have over here. So now I could take this, uh, this circle here itself. I'm just going to use my direct selection tool. I'm just going to grab it by this anchor point and snap it directly to this end of the path over here. All right, let me actually zoom in here and I can actually see that I can do that. Illustrator's cursor will turn white when I have both anchor points exactly aligned to each other. So now I have a beautiful, you know, uh, curve that's going to go straight from my line segment that I've drawn directly into the curve and it'll be a perfect curve in this way. So now what I could do is I could get it so that I want the actual curve to look just the way that I I'm looking for here. So let's actually drag this just a little bit more. I want some more kind of bend to it and say something just like that. Beautiful. So because I have the line that I've created, I can do the following. I can also take my scissor tool, right? Just hit the C for the scissor tool or cut. And I'm just going to click right there on that uh, guide that I've drawn. So now I can go ahead and I could select these other parts of the path. I just click this and hit um, delete, and then let's go ahead and now delete this part as well. So now I have created a perfect point here, and I can just simply click and uh, drag to marquee select these areas and press Command J to join them. And I have a beautiful, smooth connection between those two lines that are right there. So that's this part of A over here. How am I going to uh, join these two parts? Again, this is what I love about the Shape Builder tool that works on so many different things. Just click and drag for these to select these two areas, Shift M and then option drag across the parts that I don't want and it's automatically connected now just like that as well. I can take these two pieces and connect those. Command J, beautiful. So now I'm coming over here to the bottom. I want to connect, let's say, this part here as well. So what I could do, there are several ways to do this. There's no one right way or anything else like that. What I could do is I could take, let's say, this line right here, click over here, hold down my shift key, my shift key here and then click again so I get another anchor point somewhere about over here. And then I'm going to come to over here, and because I have Smart Guides turned on again, my cursor is going to snap to that path. And let's say I want to come up just about over here, click and drag upwards. And again, the Smart Guides is going to force Illustrator to snap the control handle to the same 290 degree angle that I created of this line right here. And obviously, when I drew my sketch, I wasn't getting a really nice smooth curve. Here, instead of Illustrator, I can do much better. Um, and that looks beautiful right there. Perfect. So now what I could do is once again, select these paths that I have here. The Shape Builder tool only works on artwork that's selected. So now that I've selected these paths, even if I may touch the moon shape, because the moon shape is not selected, the Shape Builder tool ignores it. Shift M for the Shape Builder tool, Option drag over these parts that I don't need. And I can actually just go ahead now and click and drag with the Shift key across all these to combine them together. So now I have basically created the, the entire part of the A, just to drag it, drag it over here so you can see it with perfect anchor points just the way that I want it. So now what I'm going to do is, again, remember I needed to have two halves of the A. I'm going to tap the O key on my keyboard. O is the Reflect tool. 
and I could let's say zoom in a little bit closer here. The way the reflect tool works is that you click on one point where you want the reflection to occur. We refer to this as the origin point. I click here once, and then I move my cursor away from that, and I hold on the shift key and I drag. And that allows me to create now a complete opposite on this side. <laughs> I just realized I need to hold on the option key when I do that, because that way I want to create a copy. So shift, drag, and also hold on the option key. You can see now that the, my cursor has like a little double arrow, a black and a white arrow. That means I'm creating a copy. And now I release the mouse. And now I have the pieces that I need. I'm simply going to go ahead now and leave them colored as they are, because I want to start working on the spaceship and the other parts of this as well. So now let's talk about the swoosh itself that's kind of, kind of coming from behind the planet and across over here as well. Let's see how we create that. Again, I'm going to go to my ellipse tool. I'm going to position this in the center over here. And I'm just going to draw an ellipse because, that, again, that's a perfect shape. I don't want to worry about you know, questioning myself when I use the pen tool. Is my curve accurate? Is it smooth? Is it clean? The more that I can rely on Illustrator's perfection in this case, the better off I'm going to be. And all I have to do is make small modifications to it. So I'm going to start over here in the center, option again to draw it from the center. I don't want to hold the shift key down because I want this to be an oval. And I'm going to choose a shape about, let's say, just like this and just like that. That looks pretty good right there. And I'm going to tap the R key to rotate this. Now, by default, Illustrator sets the origin point of the rotation to the center, which is fine. I'm just going to go ahead now and click over here and drag down because I want to rotate it to be on an angle about, let's say, something like this. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Now, I'm going on my sketch over here. It looks like that my sketch had a more of a tight type of uh, curve in this case here. I'm going to kind of go with the one that I just did because I like it better. So let's actually hide the layers panel for now. I don't need that. Um, so I want to have it, though, where it starts kind of thin, but then it gets thicker. So how would I do that? So the way that I do that is I'm going to take just my regular selection tool. I'm going to tap the R key to get the rotate tool again. And I'm going to click now on this anchor point right here. And again, I have smart guides on. So as soon as I mouse over the anchor, it highlights and says, there's the anchor. If I click on this right now, I am setting the origin point, meaning I'm setting the rotation area to basically hinge on this one area. So now I can go ahead and I can hold down my option key and uh, drag upwards a little bit. And I create something like this, right? Let's go ahead and maybe create something a little bit thicker, maybe something like that. Now, I, what I can do also is I can create three of them. I'm actually going to create three of them. So I'm just going to option drag up about halfway to about, let's say, here. That looks about pretty good. And release the mouse. And then I'm going to press Command D uh, for do it again. That's just going to repeat the last transformation. So now you can see it kind of uh, have a thick part here. It gets thin, and then it gets thick again as it kind of swoops up to this part of the A. So again, just like I was doing before, I was using the Shape Builder tool to break these apart into the pieces that I want to work with. So there are several things that I could do. I want this to kind of have more of a, a, a pointy part to this. So I'm going to take my pen tool here. I'm just going to draw a regular basic shape. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to draw a shape, let's say, to here and then to here, something like that, because I just want to get some kind of a point. When you're using the Shape Builder tool, I just want to have some kind of path that will tell Illustrator where to sever or cut that path when I'm working with it. So that's one area that I want to work with over here. I also need to just completely remove the parts uh, that are going to be on this entire aspect of it. So I'm just going to draw a line just right here. Actually, let me undo that. I need to command click here to deselect and then go ahead and draw a line right there. And I'm also going to have to cut it in another area because I want the line to kind of start behind here and then come around here on the front. Um, so in order for me to do that, I'm just going to probably cut it uh, here as well. So I'm just going to choose a line that's going to go from here. Yeah. <laughs> Command click over here and create a line just like that. Beautiful. So now I have the parts that I need. All I have to do is select these lines, these cut lines that I've drawn. And then I'm going to select these three shapes over here. Again, nothing else is selected, so the Shape Builder tool won't touch those. Shift M to access my Shape Builder tool. Option drag across the areas that I don't need. And if you use the Shift key while you're option dragging, it'll create a marquee. So you can basically uh, highlight an area in a rectangular fashion. And I'll go ahead and I'll do that. Let's just option drag over these areas to get rid of the line. Let's go ahead and option drag over this and this, because I don't need that. And let's go ahead now and option drag over these two. So it looks like I have the areas uh, kind of 
split up the way that I want them to be. That looks pretty nice. I'm actually going to hold down and shift drag across these areas to combine them into one shape. And then I'm going to go ahead now and shift drag across these to combine this into one whole shape. So now I have basically two shapes. I have the part that goes behind and then I have the part that's going to come across the front right here. Uh, I do want this to kind of have more of a natural kind of look to it. So here's where I might kind of mess around a little bit with the, you know, how this actually looks. And I can do this in a variety of ways. I actually will sometimes just use the smooth tool inside of Illustrator and repeatedly mouse over an area to kind of turn it from a straight line into a curve and then give it some more of a natural kind of feel as I just drag over it until I get something that looks the way that I want to. Um, if I need to, I could just go ahead now and just adjust this as well. In the uh, version that I created, the final version, I just, uh, you know, experimented with a, with a variety of different ways to do this. Um, let me go ahead now and kind of make this look. This is, that's gnarly, that area. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little with the smooth tool. The smooth tool can be really useful as you're doing this. With the, if you have a Wacom, uh, a Wacom tablet, it's going to be a lot easier for you to manage this aspect of it right over here. Uh, <laughs> this is looking more like a meteor kind of thing. Well, I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out a little bit later. Um, but for now, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Uh, that's kind of coming out of the back over here. So now let's focus on the spaceship. And this is one of the things that you really have to understand that one of the most powerful ways that you can create artwork inside of Illustrator is by working off of something else. Um, I'm actually going to save this document here for a second and dump it on my desktop here. Let's call this one Apollo A because this is the letter A that I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead now and create another artboard in my file. Go to my artboards panel. Let's just create a new artboard here. Kind of move over here. Let me zoom out just a second. I'm going to draw a vertical line. Again, I'm holding the shift key down right down the center here so it snaps in place. Perfect. I'm going to choose File, Place. I basically just went to Google Images and I went, you know, searching for um, basically some way for me to uh, uh, reference or know what shape a spaceship is, in this case, Apollo 13. So I did what I call, I have, I always create what I call a research folder. I just go to Google Images and I pull a whole bunch of stuff in here so I can reference something and know what it really looks like in real life. So if I go to spacecraft here, I have something called module. And this is an illustration that was done. I'm just going to place it here on the artboard. And it's on a 45 degree angle. So I'm just going to take this right now and just uh, double click on my rotate tool, rotate it 45 degrees. And click and drag so it snaps to the center right here where I drew the guide. Because this is a symmetrical piece of artwork, or primarily symmetrical, we'll see there's certain parts that are not. Um, all I really need to do is just draw half of the artwork. And then I'm just, the same way that I was working with the A before, I'm just focused on drawing half of my artwork, and then I'll go ahead and I'll flip it around, and I'll have my entire shape. So in this case here, this piece of artwork right now is not on the sketch layer. So if I go over here uh, to my layer panel, for example, you can see that my artwork right now is on this layer. I can click and drag on this guy and try to bring him down, but he won't because the sketch layer is locked right now. If I double click on the sketch layer, and I turn off the template option, so now it's a regular layer. I can drop this image now down into the sketch layer and then double click on the sketch layer, turn it back to a template again. And now that artwork becomes locked and has now been dimmed back. Let's go back to my artwork layer and let's start drawing this. And again, in this case here, it's probably going to be easy for me just to use some very simple stuff with the, uh, with the pen tool. I'm going to take the pen tool here, start by clicking, hold down the shift key, click over there. I'm going to click and drag to get a little bit of a curve, just say just like that. Now, the next w segment here needs to be a straight line. So I'm just going to simply click on that anchor point, and that's going to collapse the handle here, create what we call a cusp, where basically the path that comes into the anchor point is curved, but the next path that comes out of it is going to be a straight line. I'm just going to click over here with the shift key, shift key again on an angle, come down here. Let's make a little teeny, if I zoom in here, you can see there's kind of a little bit of a detail here. So I'm just going to click with the shift key down create that. Let's come down to, let's say, right about over here. Now, you'll notice that one side of the LEM or the lunar module, lunar module here is a little bit different. I'm going to press D, by the way, because I want a black line here, but I don't want the white fill. So again, the slash key is going to go ahead now and get rid of the white fill. I'm just going to go ahead now and just kind of wing it here. No one's going to know the detail about this piece of uh, uh, the machinery right here. So I, I'm actually going to add this part later. So I'm just going to simply click down here. And this is one of the most beautiful things about working with Illustrator and creating anything that's uh, illustrative, in my opinion, is that you control what the look of this artwork is going to be. So I'm just going to come down here and create what I feel it should be. Add these little teeny details here. 
I'm not even going to bother making that a curve, just a straight line. And I'm just going to go ahead now and kind of finish up that part that's right there. So this really overall is my shape. This is the shape that I am working with. So if I zoom out just a bit over here, I can select my regular selection tool, select that outline that I've just cr created, press the O key on my keyboard, option click on the anchor point, which is right here in the center, shift, option, and now I've basically created the other side here. Select both of these shapes, hit um, Command J to join them together. And now I've created that shape. Now there are a few details here that I want to add. So here's one of them, for example, I want to create these windows. Here I'll use the pen tool to just click three times, create a basic window here. I want this window to be on this other side also. I could have, by the way, just done, I should have done this all before I flipped it over. Um, but I'll just go ahead now and hit the O key, click right over here, and then flip it. Let's actually select the entire shape. Hit O, set my origin point, option, shift. Bring that window over here. Let's focus on some windows on this part of the spaceship as well. I'm just going to use a regular rectangle tool here for a second. Click and drag. And then you could use the share tool. There's like all these different tools inside of Illustrator. Um, it's actually right over here. And I can just uh, click to set an origin point and again, shift and drag to kind of bring, bring it in just a little bit. Let's use my regular selection tool here. Select just this part. And bring it in so we can see a little bit of an angle, just like that. Again, O, set my origin point, do reflection. So now it's reflected on that side. Now these windows over here are going to be a little bit different, so I'm just going to take a regular rectangle tool, click and drag, make a rectangle. Option drag to that over here. I don't want these to be too close to each other because this piece of artwork is actually going to be reduced to be very, very small. So I want to make sure that there's enough space in between all, all my shapes, otherwise you're going to close up and you won't see anything there as well. So let's go ahead and do something like this. So now I've created those basic windows. Let's zoom out just a little bit. And I want to add some other details, especially over here to the lunar module to make it more interesting. And I also have to add the legs here as well. So I'm just going to add some basic uh, shapes over here. Again, I don't want to do anything too crazy here, so we don't worry too much about detail. I'm just going to go ahead and add some shapes like this. And then I'll go ahead now and I'll add a shape here. And if I want to now incorporate those into the overall shape, what do I use? Of course, my Shape Builder tool. Shift, drag across these three shapes. Shift, M, and then just drag across all those right there. And they all get combined into one shape. So now let's go ahead now and focus really just on the legs here. I'm not even going to bother adding these other details. Actually, you know what? To make it a little bit cooler, I'm just going to add this little dish over here. So let's go ahead now and do an ellipse tool. Option, Shift, get a nice little perfect circle. Let's take the pen tool here and let's actually draw a diagonal line like that. And then let's also go ahead and draw a straight line like that. That should be fine. And I could again, you know, again, just select all these shapes. Shift M for the Shape Builder tool. Just get rid of the parts that I don't want. I'm just option clicking on the areas that I don't want. And then we'll go ahead and remove those for me. Look, look at that. Lovely. So now I have this part here. Let's add the legs. Let's take my regular pen tool here. Click, click, click right here. Let's take this right here and let's click there. Let's do another little landing gear there. Take this straight across. Beautiful. I want actually this part here on the outside to be a little bit thicker. So let's change the stroke weight to like two point for that. That looks a little bit better. Now for the bottom here of the feet, I can use an ellipse tool to option drag just like that, let's say. And then just use my direct selection tool, select the top anchor point, delete, and then command J to go ahead now and join it so I get that. I'm going to hit shift X because notice now right now that my fill is none and my stroke is black. X toggles the focus between the two. Shift X actually swaps the fill and stroke colors. So now I've created something like that. And you can nudge this up just a drop to make it look like it's attached. And we actually need to do this for the other side as well. And I'm going to need one of these guys over here in the center because I have my smart guides and my rule here down the middle. The guide it snaps right to the center. Let's actually add a stroke right up here. And this stroke needs to be two points also. Shift X because I want it to be have a black stroke. Let's go ahead and select it and change the stroke weight to two. Let's take this entire assembly right here 
hit tap the O key, click on the center point right here, option shift, flip it around the other side, bam, done. So now if I zoom out for a minute here, it looks like I have everything I need for the spaceship. I'm not going to add any other details here. So now I just want to go ahead and make sure I have the right colors for this. This is, is going to end up going on a, on a white background. I'm sorry, on a dark background. So I really want this to be white, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So what I'm going to do is uh, simply take all the shapes that are here right now, okay, and go ahead now and group them together because I don't want to accidentally leave any of these behind. And let's get it into position. So let's take the spaceship right here now that we have it. Bring it to this side of the page. Hit the R key for my rotate tool and rotate this just about. Looks like the angle is going to be something like that. Position it right here. S key. Scale this down in size. Now I'm scaling this, by the way, and you can see uh, the stroke weight over here has not scaled, meaning that. Uh, this part still remains two points, and actually, I don't like that at all. Um, that's a preference inside of Illustrator. I'm going to press undo before I scaled it down, and I'm going to go over here uh, to my preferences, Command-K, and there's an option here called Scale Strokes and Effects. I'm going to turn that on. So now when I scale, I do want the strokes uh, weight to be scaled as well. So that way I can go ahead and scale this down. Drop it into position right about over here. And again, we're just doing kind of a rough thing right here, so I don't care if it's perfect or not. Um, and because it's vector, I could always adjust for that later anyway. Let's get a little bit smaller. I don't want to stand out so much. This is really should be a nice little detail, a subtle thing as well. So I kind of have it just where I need it. So now let's make it the right, the right actual colors that are here. Kind of zoom in here. There are several ways to do this again, but I know I want the middle shape here to be filled white, so I'm just going to go ahead now and just... I'm using my direct selection tool and I'm option clicking to basically get the entire object selected right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill that white. Um, send it to the back. And I have other shapes in here as well. I'm going to hit Command Y just to go into outline mode. And I have these shapes, which are the window stuff. And let's bring that to the front of my group. You can do that by just choosing Object Arrange, Bring to Front. Um, and I want that to have no stroke. And I can just simply come here and say no stroke for that. And I'm going to have the background be like on a midnight blues, which is this swatch that I'm using right here as an example. So I'm going to choose to fill it with that right there. And let's go ahead now and make some adjustments in the other areas as well. So I don't need a stroke on this at all. So let's get rid of the stroke on that. So let's go ahead now and select this and this and this. These are filled right now. So let's go ahead and actually I want this one too. We want them to be filled with white, but we want them to have no stroke applied to them. And then I want these strokes over here uh, to be selected. So I'm actually going to go ahead now and uh, just select these strokes here. Um, there are, I probably should have grouped just the strokes alone. There are ways to do this as well, but I'm doing this the slow way. Select just those strokes right there and change those strokes to be white. So now that's going to stand out beautifully on that background. So now we pretty much have the things that we need here in place. We want this to be colored red, this swoosh thing right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select it. We want no stroke, but we want to give this, let's say, this kind of kind of dark red color, I guess. Well, let's do my stroke. Let's do the fill that way. And let's take the A itself. The A is going to be filled white. So let's select both of these, and we say we want no stroke on these, but we do want it to be filled white. I say they didn't actually join those together. We should probably do that. Let's take these guys right here. Join them. So we should have the two halves that are right here. Beautiful. That looks like oh, we have to join those two shapes also. Join that one. Join that guy together. Now we should have the whole A. There we go. Okay, select them both, fill them with white. Now we're cooking with gas. All right, so we want uh, this part of the A to be brought to the front, right? So I just did object basically arrange, bring to front. So now that part of the A is in front of that little swoosh part that's there. And we take the little moon shape. I want it to match the same uh, 
color that the A is right now. So just tap the I for the eyedropper tool, click on that. Now that turns that white. And I'm going to take this part of my swoosh thingy and send that to the back. It looks like over here, if I zoom in, I got some part here that remained. Let's go ahead now and give that the right fill. We have some parts of black left over there. Not sure how that got there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. This happens in Illustrator sometime. Happy mistakes, just to show you in a little technique here. I don't, I don't want to lose this. I'm just going to press Command-2 to lock it. And I'm going to basically see what else is kind of hiding behind there and delete those. And then Command Option 2 will now release that back. So now I got rid of that shape. So now let's just create a background here. So I'm going to take a nice little rectangle, um, zoom out a little bit, and draw it for the shape of this page. Let's go ahead now and do that midnight blue color and send it to the back. So now I'm kind of looking at what this is going to look like finally. We don't need this guy anymore, by the way. Let's unlock the sketch layer. We can completely hide the sketch layer. So now we're focusing on just this guy. Looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, actually, I w one of the things that I created over here, just to kind of make this illustration look a little bit more interesting, is kind of show where the explosion was, which part of the spacecraft was ex uh, had exploded. And you know, one of the things about uh, this entire story was that the debris was kind of venting and the, and the oxygen was venting into space. That's how they kind of knew that things were wrong. So I'm actually going to create that right here. So I'm just going to zoom in. It's very easy to do this. If I just take my regular pen tool, um, let's highlight the artwork layer, and just draw like a rectangle, regular plain rectangle on this part of the ship. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't, I don't want it to be perfect. I actually want it to look like there was an explosion here, so I want it to look a little bit more jagged. So the easy way to do that is to go to the Effect menu, and I'll choose Distort and Transform, and I'll choose Roughen. And then let's click on the Preview button. Let's do a size of like 5%, uh, but detail of like maybe 40 per inch or something like that. I want to make sure Corner is set. Um, let's actually see if I do detail of, like, say, 3. Actually, I want more. That looks a little bit better. Click OK. So now I kind of got this rough, broken part over here. And I want to show where part of this is kind of venting into space. So I'm going to use my pen tool to just draw some kind of shape over here where it's kind of like doing something like that. Now, it's not perfect here. I don't want it to be. I'm actually going to take this object right now. Let's select it. Uh, and I want to fill it white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the opacity down way back, like maybe 30%. So it kind of looks like there's like, it's just a tint of that color, maybe even 20%. Uh, and it's got these rough edges. I want to smoothen that. I want to smooth that out. It's funny how you can use roughen to do two things. You could use roughen to make a straight object look jagged. But I could also choose effect. And I could choose that exact same roughen command, distort and transform roughen. But this time, by choosing uh, the smooth option, I can basically smooth it out so that it doesn't uh, have that much, uh, that many segments. The detail is less. And I click OK. And now it kind of has more of that freeform kind of gas thing. Let me push it a little bit further away from the spacecraft. And I want to show like, little pieces of debris. So what I might do is just add, let's say, a rectangle here. Um, I'm just going to choose Option Shift to create a, a little rectangle about that big. Let's color it white. I'm actually going to rotate it so it's more of a diamond. R Shift to rotate it 45 degrees. I'm going to create a few of these here. So let's create, let's say, one shape here, another one here, another one here. I'm going to want these to be kind of really close to each other, but then as it gets further away, I want them to be for, you know, kind of spaced apart. So now what I'll do is I'm going to select these objects that I have right here. And I can actually just select all these. This object blue right now is in the background. I'm going to press Command-2 to lock it so it doesn't get in the way. And I'm going to go ahead now and select all these shapes. Shift-click on that shape so I deselect the middle. So now just these white guys are selected. And I want to make them have all different sizes and shapes. And, and I'll even have them kind of rotate a little bit differently so they look like there's pieces of debris floating through, you know, flying through space. So I'm going to go to the Object menu. I'm going to choose an option called Transform transform each. And this will allow me to treat each of these objects as if they were their own. So I want to scale them to be much smaller. It's maybe 20%. I'm going to click on the Preview button. So you see how they're all kind of scaling on their own. They're not scaling with each other. But I could choose this option called Random, meaning don't all scale them exactly the same way, so that that way I get a variety of different techniques that's there. 
I can also choose an angle of, let's say, 30%. So now, again, they're not all rotating exactly 30 degrees um, because I have the randomized ch option checked, but they're all happening kind of individually with each other. Uh, maybe even if I go down to like around 20%, uh, 10% here, scale them to be a little bit smaller. Click OK. And now I have, again, these like kind of random pieces of debris. When I zoom out, it kind of makes it look like this piece is kind of flying from the ship. So ultimately, all I have right now is just to add the text. So I'm going to take my type tool, uh, click over here, and type. And this is called Apollo 13. So go ahead and type that in there. Uh, let's color it white. Um, I'm going to center this, Command-Shift-C for center. Now, I could align this to the center of my page. Remember, I had the guide down the middle. But Illustrator can center for me automatically. If I click on this icon at the top over here, which is called Align to Selection, notice it's a pop-up. If I click on it, I can choose Align to Artboard instead. And now Illustrator is smart enough, oh, you want to align it. So here's the center option. It will now automatically align that to the center. And I'll say this way, I'll go ahead and position this this way. And Option Drag to create a copy down here. And let's change, uh, double click to highlight the text and change it to the author, Jim Lovell. I'm going to select both type objects here. Option right arrow will go ahead and open the tracking so that now I can have some space uh, inside the letters there, which is what Jessica was doing. And I'm going to use a typeface called Musio, uh, Musio Slab. It's the closest that I have to what I think Jessica was using. I think she was using Archer. Uh, I have that font because I'm using uh, Illustrator CC, which is part of Creative Cloud, and you have access to TypeKit for desktop, which is totally awesome. So you can see over here that if I go to my fonts, for example, I have the Museo Slab font added here. I actually didn't know that I had Museo, but when I saw what Jessica was doing, I went to Google and I typed in, what's similar to Archer? And somebody said Museo on some post somewhere. So luckily, I had that in Creative Cloud, just added it, and within 10 seconds, I had it inside of Illustrator. Beautiful. So here is my final version of that spaceship that I created inside of Illustrator. Again, it's part of my process. I hope that you learn from this. Uh, uh, maybe when I get around to finding a little bit more time, I'll do the other option that I had, which was the L and the Saturn V rocket on the launch pad. Um, but hopefully you've learned something from this. And I, I had a great time with this. And just want to say, by the way, thanks to Jessica for this awesome project. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. If you want more uh, instruction on Illustrator from me, you can go to my blog. Uh, it's rwillustrator.blogspot.com. Just do a search for Morty Golding uh, in Google. And I also have like 20 courses on lynda.com uh, on Illustrator as well. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.